Hi all. What y'all what you're looking at are some stepper driver units that I got off the internet for a CNC project. And I uh, ran into some issues with them I thought might be worth sharing. These boards have at their heart a uh, the hybrid THB7128 uh, and basically it's a good chip. Um I, but it wants a good solid clock signal and uh, anything that uh, has a fairly high Z and in this case this set seems to have just a plain old optical coupler output open collector and what I found was that it would pick up extra clock pulses um, probably most likely due to the ringing of the off the um, uh, stepper units and what I ended up doing was putting some capacitors across the clock input signal to pin one, which is the chip uh, signal ground. I put in 300 picofarads, and that seemed to solve the problem pretty much for me. And I'm sure there are other ways you can do it, and probably the newer generation of these boards may not suffer from this. They're probably using some sort of an active trigger, which has a much lower impedance than what I... Um, well, how I envision what's happening is you know, the uh, when these switching transistors or MOSFETs in here operate, there's a lot of ringing, high frequency ringing going on, and that migrates over into the clock signal and causes an additional uh, clock signal that uh, you're, you don't intend to have. It was particularly noticeable on um, the high current settings, if you set it to the minimum, then um, then it wasn't quite as obvious and you got consistent results. In other words, if you set it up for 200 pulses or based your uh, servo stepper on uh, 200 pulses, you got 200, the effect of 200 pulses plus these micro step division um, factor that you uh, put in there. What I ended up doing, I set up the little Pi unit to create a known set of pulses um, at, a, at a known rate using Pi wiring. able to uh, create some test runs that uh, I knew what or had a fairly high degree of confidence of what was going on. And it, as it turns out the Pi is a good fit to the little board um, that three volt output of the GPIO pins is able to directly drive the, the board so you don't have to worry about any interface. I took the basic blink program that um, is out there and just modified to create a, a, a known number of, of pulses. So here's the modified blink program running on the Pi. This modified version prints to the screen how it's been configured. It shows the number of micro steps per step it's going to use, the total number of clock pulses it takes to make a, to a full revolution. It also includes how the clock pulse itself has been configured here, 10 microseconds for active pulse, followed by 614 microseconds of dead time before the next pulse. So that results in a clock frequency of roughly around 1.6 kilohertz. What's not shown in the initial display is the number of passes that it's been configured to run, or how many revolutions it'll make in a pass. Maybe a better word for pass is test cycle. In this example, the program has been configured for five test cycles. Each cycle has two parts, a forward and a reverse. And in this example, the program has been configured to make two revolutions in each direction. And this is the signal that the Pi presents to the stepper board while running the modified blink program. As you can see there's a little jitter here, but otherwise it's a pretty pure signal. Now watch and listen closely as the Pi drives an unmodified stepper board. The stepper is supposed to be making two revolutions in each direction, but if you look at the split in the coupler, 
you'll see that it's going well past two revolutions in one direction, but amazingly enough returns back to the zero point in this short run. And here's what happens when the Pi drives the THB7128 modified by placing 300 picofarads between pin 1 and 3. Listen to the sound of the stepper and watch the split in the coupler. The NEMA 23 stepper runs much quieter and all three boards that were modified produce the same results. Okay, now that the boards have been modified and tested, let's see what the machine does, given some real G code. The Planet CNC software used here comes with a sample program called Bear.nc. It'll be used to demonstrate how the modified boards in this machine can perform in the real world condition. What you're seeing now is one of a half a dozen passes of the machine running the same piece of code repeatedly with only adjustments to the Z axis between each path. Now we'll fast forward by several hours and watch the finishing path. And through the magic of video editing, we'll jump forward a few more line, a few more passes, and watch the machine come to a stop. So this is what the demo G code rendered using stock THB boards. And here's what happened with using the modified boards. I think the modification was well worth what 